Think of the city you're living in right now. In a hundred years, what do you see happening around you? Unfortunately, for the places we're about to visit in a few moments, Father Time hasn't been very good. Nowadays, they're as good as gone. Here are the once popular cities of America that are now left for dead. Back in 1900, Buffalo stood tall as the eighth largest city in the entire nation. Its strategic location at the intersection of the Erie Canal and the Great Lakes made it a hub of trade and industry. The Erie Canal, often called the Mother of Cities, brought a flood of commerce to Buffalo's doorstep, fueling its growth and shaping its destiny. The city thrived on its grain milling operations, processing vast quantities of grain from the heartland and shipping them out to the world. The steel industry, too, found a home in Buffalo, boasting one of the largest steel mills in the country. The clang of machinery and the roar of production echoed through the city, a testament to its industrial might. World War II brought a surge of prosperity to Buffalo. Like many other northern industrial cities, the factories hummed with activity, churning out goods to support the war effort. The population swelled, reaching over 500,000 by the mid-1950s. It was a time of optimism and growth, a period when Buffalo seemed unstoppable. The post-war years brought a different tune. As the manufacturing plants shifted their focus to cars and other industrial goods, Buffalo began to feel a disturbance. The heyday of heavy industry started to wane, and with it, Buffalo's fortunes took a downturn. The deindustrialization of America hit Buffalo hard, leaving wounds that would never fully heal. Factories closed, jobs disappeared, and the families faced uncertain futures. The population dwindled, dropping to half of what it once was. The bustling streets became quieter, and the once thriving industries now mere shadows of their former glory. Flint, once a bustling industrial powerhouse at the birthplace of General Motors, has stopped in its tracks. Back in its prime, Flint was synonymous with prosperity and innovation. The 1960s marked a golden era for the city, with nearly 200,000 residents calling it home. General Motors was the lifeblood of Flint, employing a staggering 80,000 people in various manufacturing and administrative roles. The city thrummed with activity, fueled by the automotive industry's boom and the ingenuity of its workforce. Flint was not just any city. It was the beating heart of GM's operations, particularly the Buick division. The Buick headquarters in Flint symbolized the city's close ties to the automotive giant, showcasing the city's importance in shaping America's car culture. Flint's descent began with the shifting tides of the automotive industry. As GM restructured its operations, Flint felt the brunt of these changes. The number of GM employees dwindled drastically, plummeting from 80,000 in 1960 to fewer than 8,000 today. The closure of factories and the relocation of operations eroded the city's economic foundation, leaving many without jobs and dimming the once bright prospects of Flint's future. The turning point came in 2002 when Flint was forced into receivership akin to municipal bankruptcy. This marked a somber chapter in the city's history. The population decline mirrored the economic downturn with fewer than 100,000 residents remaining in Flint today. The relocation of GM's Buick division headquarters to Detroit in 1998 was a symbolic blow to Flint's identity. It signified not just a physical shift, but a shift in the city's economic and cultural landscape. The void left by GM's departure echoed through Flint streets, leaving vacant buildings and a sense of loss in its wake. Hartford, known as the insurance capital of the world, was once a vibrant hub of commerce, innovation, and culture. The city was home to a plethora of insurance firms, earning its reputation as the global epicenter of insurance operations. This distinction brought wealth, prestige, and a steady stream of jobs to Hartford, making it a thriving economic center. The 1950s marked a period of peak population for Hartford with over 177,000 residents calling the city home. Alongside its insurance prowess, Hartford boasted a diverse economic portfolio, including manufacturing and publishing businesses. The city's skyline reflected its prosperity adorned with the headquarters of major insurance companies and bustling factories. But Hartford's glory days were numbered. The insurance industry underwent consolidation, leading to the relocation of some firms to new locations. This shift, while driven by business strategies, had profound effects on Hartford's economy. Prominent insurance companies such as MetLife, Cigna, Lincoln Financial, Mass Mutual, and the Hartford 
downsized their workforces or moved operations, impacting employment opportunities and the city's economic vibrancy. The downsizing of major firms like the Hartford with its deep historical roots in the city was a blow to Hartford's identity as the insurance capital. The city experienced a decline in population, dropping to around 124,000 residents in recent years. The once thriving manufacturing and publishing sectors also faced challenges further contributing to Hartford's economic woes. For over 200 years, New Orleans flourished as one of America's most important ports strategically located at the mouth of the Mississippi River. The bustling port was a hub of commercial activity handling goods and trade that fueled the city's economy. The river trade, coupled with the city's role in cotton and financial sectors, established New Orleans as a prominent economic center in the South. But the dynamics of trade and transportation shifted over time. Advancements in technology led to automation in port operations, reducing the need for labor-intensive tasks once performed by workers. Commercial traffic that once flowed through the river found more efficient routes via truck, rail, and air impacting the traditional maritime activities of New Orleans. The city's financial prominence also faced challenges as faster-growing southern cities like Atlanta emerged as new financial centers. Despite these shifts, tourism emerged as a growing industry, offering a lifeline to offset the declining trade and financial sectors. But New Orleans faced geographical vulnerabilities, with parts of the city situated below sea level, making it susceptible to flooding and hurricanes. The devastating impact of Hurricane Betsy in 1965 foreshadowed the city's vulnerability to natural disasters. The most catastrophic blow came in August 2005 when Hurricane Katrina unleashed unprecedented destruction, testing the resilience of New Orleans and its residents. The aftermath of Katrina led to a drastic population decline with numbers plummeting from 627,000 in 1960 to just above 250,000 in the years following the storm. The BP oil crisis further compounded New Orleans' challenges, hindering what could have been a nascent recovery post-Katrina. The city faced economic setbacks, environmental concerns, and a long road to rebuilding infrastructure and communities. At its peak, Albany was one of the largest inland ports globally, strategically positioned where the Hudson River meets the Erie Canal. This geographic advantage propelled Albany into a major center for industries such as finished lumber and ironworks. The bustling port activity and industrial prowess fueled the city's growth and prosperity, attracting a diverse population seeking opportunities in manufacturing and trade. The influence of politicians who worked in Albany contributed to the development of several universities and colleges, transforming the city into an educational hub. This influx of higher education institutions not only enriched Albany's cultural fabric, but also laid the foundation for emerging sectors such as information technology and biotechnology. By 1950, Albany's population had soared to 134,000, reflecting the city's economic vitality and growing influence in the region. But the winds of change swept through Albany in the 1960s, marking the beginning of economic declines that would shape the city's trajectory. Despite efforts to diversify and adapt, Albany faced challenges as traditional manufacturing industries waned, impacting employment opportunities and population growth. The city's population dipped below 95,000, highlighting the demographic shifts and economic challenges it faced. In the middle of the last century, Allentown boasted two key advantages that fueled its prosperity. Firstly, its strategic location made it a crucial hub for railroads transporting freight from the Midwest through Pennsylvania and New Jersey to the eastern seaboard. This transportation network facilitated trade and commerce, positioning Allentown as a vital link in the regional economy. Secondly, Allentown's proximity to iron ore deposits made it a major manufacturing and refining center akin to Bethlehem to its east and Pittsburgh to its west. The steel industry thrived in Allentown with factories bustling with activity and providing jobs to thousands of residents. The city's skyline was dotted with smokestacks and industrial complexes, symbols of its economic prowess and industrial might. But like many other northeastern manufacturing cities, Allentown faced challenges as, as global dynamics shifted. The rise of steel production in Japan, marked by greater volumes at lower prices, posed a significant threat to American steel manufacturers. 
Allentown watched its major product, steel, face stiff competition from overseas markets, leading to economic uncertainties and job losses. The decline of the steel industry had a ripple effect on Allentown's economy and population. Factories scaled back operations or closed down altogether, leading to layoffs and economic downturns. So, which of these cities do you want to rise from the ashes? Feel free to share your answer in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.